Hello, Utu. This is Beijing, or Fawn, or Brianna, or whatever the hell I'm calling myself now, because I really don't know. I'm making this video because I haven't made a video in a really, really long time, which I said in my last video. I just wanted to start making some kind of regular video, because I really do take YouTube seriously. So I decided I'm going to make a Degrassi review video where I review all the Degrassi episodes and I say out loud what everyone else who watches Degrassi actually believes. So this is to all my Degrassi friends, hello. I'm going to be reviewing the past two episodes of Need You Now. Alright, there are three main stories of the last two episodes. Uh, the Casey and Jenna story, the Niner story, and then the main story of Eli and Imogen. Casey and Jenna story, um, Casey gets a letter from the adoptive parents of Ty saying that he and Jenna are invited to the christening, he goes, and when he first gets there the baby doesn't recognize him, and then by the end the baby does, and well, before. He invites Jenna to come to the christening, and her excuse for not going is, "Oh, sorry, me and my new boyfriend that we've been that I've been dating for like five seconds are going to the mall, and that's more important than the baby I gave up for adoption." Which you know, you know, understandable. Give up a baby for adoption? I would want to go to the mall. Overseeing that baby too. He becomes weirdly obsessed with being around the baby, which I thought was weird, because like, I don't know, maybe his character feels guilty, but for the past couple of episodes where it was talking about Jenna and Casey together, like, it seemed like he really had nothing to do with the baby. It was just kind of Jenna there and him going off, screwing Marisol. Oh, God, I but anyway, I thought their story was... Nah, interesting-ish, but kind of out of character for both of them, because one, Casey all of a sudden was interested in the baby that he's never been interested in, and two, Jenna all of a sudden wasn't interested in the baby she's been obsessed with for the past forever. And the Niner story. The Niner backstory basically goes like this. Tori, uh, she auditions for the Power Squad, and at first doesn't get in, and then uh, because of Degrassi fate, somehow gets in because the girl broke her leg or whatever, which is like, why are you playing lacrosse and being on the Power Squad? That seems like a conflict of some kind of interest. But anywho, she breaks her leg, Tori's on the Power Squad, and to celebrate, she decides to go videotape her douche of a boyfriend, who I forgot what his name is, decides to go videotape his her douche of a boyfriend skating and uh, she's there they skate and she's got to go to the to the power squad rehearsal and he tells her oh no just to stay for 10 more minutes and she's like well i have to be there or if i'm late i'll get in trouble kind of thing because she wasn't even supposed to be a power squad member in the first place but he's like oh come on give me dick give me dick and she's like okay which is stupid and she does and of course she's late Duh. And then she gets downplayed into the mascot role, which she's all upset about. And then the next episode, he's like, oh, you smell, I'm smelling this outfit. And she's like, oh, you're a dick, but I'm not going to say anything because I'm obsessed with you. And then they fight. A uh, little blonde chick, I, I don't know the Niners' names. They're not that interesting. But little blonde chick, she's like, uh, you know, your, your boyfriend's a dick. Right? I mean, uh, it's his fault that you're not on the squad and he doesn't give a crap. And she's like, eh, leave me alone, I'm Tori, green. And so uh, she confronts him about being a dick and he continues to be a dick. And she says, oh, will you come to the game? He's like, why? Ah. And eventually, by the end, he's redeemed because he chooses to be the mascot so that she can be on the power squad she doesn't have to wear the costume. Basically, the whole thing was just kind of, uh, I don't really like the Niners uh, storyline so far. They're kind of annoying, like more annoying than actual ninth graders. Like, I know ninth graders are annoying, but they're kind of like stupid annoying kind of thing 
But uh, maybe that'll pick up. We'll see. But I think I'm saying what most people are thinking when I say the Niners are freaking out. Last but not least, Eli and Dungeon. Um, uh, in these past two episodes, Eli has been manic again, which doesn't make sense because I watched it, and I don't know all there is to know about bipolar disorder, but mm, don't, don't get mad at me if I get this wrong, but I've been taking psychology classes, and bipolar disorder is, like, elevating between manic and depression, which is why it was called manic depression before it was called bipolar disorder, but he's not very polar, he's not very bipolar, he's more like monopolar, like he's just crazy, he's not depressed at any point in time, so it's like how does he have bipolar disorder if he's not bipolar, and it just irritates me because like Eli is probably one of the most believable characters that they've introduced into Gassy. But they're just so obsessed with reminding us that he's not all there. And it's like, it sucks because it's like, why can't he just go back to being the character that everybody fell in love with on his introduction? But anyway, him and Imogen are dating. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Um, Imogen made a collage of with um, Eli's silhouette in it about disorders, he gets mad, which is, you know, understandable, I mean, if you have bipolar disorder, you don't want, like, your friends going around, like, oh, look, my, <laughs> my friend, he's got a disorder, he's kind of, and you don't, or if you had, like, how they said, if you were an alcoholic, like, Fiona, she's not gonna want somebody to go around with a picture of her titled The Alcoholic, they don't want to be stigmatized by their disorder and anything. He gets mad, he accidentally breaks her camera, uh, he goes kind of crazy, Try, uh, he pawns his dad's guitar to order to buy her a new camera, um, he goes to her house to get the camera back because he has to re-pawn it to get his dad's guitar back, and when he gets there, she's not home, that's where she said she was going to be, she lies, and then the pickup of the next episode, he's talking to her about it, and she's like, oh yeah, I was out walking my dog, and he knows that's not true because the dog greeted him at the door. By the way, about her house, her dad seemed kind of, I'm not trying to be mean, but he seemed like he might have been suffering through something too, so who knows, to grassy. Uh, fans that might be a new storyline about her father and what's going on there in Imogen's home. But, um, he gets angry, eventually he decides to creepy stalk her and break into a home, Fiona's home, they get all raw, he goes to a therapist who says that it's just teenage hormones, which makes no sense. I have gone through teenage puberty. I know it's hard to believe, I was 12, but I have done it, and never in my teenage years have I ever <laughs> gone through such intense teenage hormones that I trashed my entire room and uh, crazy stalked someone. So that explanation didn't make sense, it kind of makes the story seem kind of like, uh, we don't know what to do, we don't want him to be crazy anymore, because everyone's tired of the saying that he's crazy, but at the same time, we have no other way of explaining why he's acting like this. That's explained as teenage hormones, he apologizes, she doesn't really forgive him, they break up, and by the end, they are just friends. She comes over as a peace offering of them being just friends. And while we're on that note, at the very end, they're laughing and giggling about being just friends, and uh, Eli says something about her staying in his room because he's about to take a shower and get naked. And she's like, ah, ha, 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 and she leaves. And you and I, me, and you Degrassi fans, at least the girls, or maybe the guys too, we all know that if freaking Monroe Chambers was like, hey, you wanna watch me get naked? Every girl in the entire world would be like, yeah, well, I mean, we're, you said, you know, no pressure, you know, well, just, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. 
no matter what will happen you will know what is true but anyway that was my review um overall i give it a 5 out of 10 it wasn't horrible but it wasn't the best two episodes either um the next episode seems like it's going to be really really awesome so let's look forward to that dave and ali drama possibly a pregnant chick mm -hmm. let's see but um thank you so much for watching my videos if you liked it please subscribe well, no it's up here subscribe and you know thumbs up send it to people you know watch my other videos watch my But any hoozles, if you couldn't hear that, I was whispering. But any hoozles, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, and talk to you later.